Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Glitter Vault. We are going to be making a gorgeous burst tumbler using one of our tumbler templates that we've got up on our website. Okay, so I've just sanded down my tumbler. I'm going to be using a 20 ounce tumbler and I've just sanded it down and just going to wipe down my tumbler with isopropyl alcohol just to remove any of the excess stainless steel gunk that is on there. Okay, now that my tumbler is all nice and clean, I will grab my white vinyl, which is the Oracle 651. Now I do my bursts a bit different than everyone else. Um, I use my vinyl as a base layer, and then I apply my double-sided adhesive paper on top of it. But you'll see what I do in a moment. So I'm just gonna grab my vinyl, and then measure my tumbler width and height. All right, so I'm just gonna trim my vinyl to size. Okay, check that your vinyl will fit onto your tumbler. One last check. Leave a little bit of an overhang on, on the top and the bottom. And I have just grabbed a brand new Cricut mat because I really want it to be stuck down for this step. Make sure you've got your vinyl around the right way as my height and width is pretty close in measurements. I had to just double check that one. Now on the right you'll see that I've got my double sided adhesive paper. Um, I am just going to apply my vinyl down on my Cricut mat, then measure my adhesive paper. So just give it a trim to make sure it's the same size. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove one side of the adhesive backing of my double sided paper. Basically whatever side went first or easiest I went with. Now for this I like to do the hinge method for application of this double sided paper. Um, mainly because once it's stuck, it's stuck. Make sure it's stuck down really good. I'm using my little squeegee to help with any air bubbles that I might have. And we are ready for cutting in the Cricut or a silhouette, whatever machine that you use. Okay, so it's all cut now from my Cricut. I'm just going to remove it from this beautifully brand new Cricut mat because I don't want to get glitter on it in the next step. So just very carefully remove it, otherwise if you're fine with your mat that you've got currently just leave it on. And here is my ugly fugly mat. It's not as sticky as the other one but it does the trick. And you'll see why I wanted to change it in a moment. 
Okay, we are up to the gorgeous glitter that we have and today we are going to be using lemon sherbet, strawberry sherbet, orange sherbet, grape sherbet, and blueberry sherbet. These glitters are part of our Sherbet series and they are a beautiful iridescent glitter which is in a fine cut. Okay, now we're up to the glitter part. I'm going to be using my handy dandy weeding tool which is a pen with a needle in it and just removing the second to biggest little arrow part. Now the thing with bursts is that you want to go from your darkest colour to your lightest. So I'm pretty sure I go purple, blue, pink, orange and then yellow. Now the reason why I start from the darkest and go to the lightest is because if I was to start with the lightest colour, gradually as soon as I do the dark colours, it will kind of merge into the yellows and the oranges and then kind of take over that colour. So best way to avoid it is do your darkest colours first, make your way to the lightest. On to the last lot now, double check that I've got all the necessary parts off and then there we go, go with the purple. Sprinkle it on and then use your finger to smush your glitter into the adhesive parts that are showing. Great, so we've reached the end, check that all the bits are um, covered in glitter and then grab a spare sheet of paper and remove the excess glitter that you've got on there. I use a fluffy brush on this part and then it flicked everywhere so I wouldn't recommend doing that. You'll see later on that I just kind of tipped my mat upwards and shook it and it all came off. Alright, so we're up to the blue section now. I'm just going to remove the biggest part of the arrows. Are they arrows? I, I don't know if they're arrows. They kind of look like arrows. So we'll go with arrows. Same process as before. And then we're just going to apply your glitter and burnish it into the adhesive paper. Don't worry, I'll fast forward this part. You don't have to sit there and watch me do it. One moment. Here we go last little bits. Again, double check that you haven't missed any parts. And I almost did a boo-boo. But it's okay, you can just push it back down. Double checking and sweet, we are up to the blue. Like I said, same as before. Dump your glitter on and then push it into the adhesive paper.
Now can you see why I told you to use an old mat? <laughs> Glitter goes everywhere, so be warned. There you go, that's your dump method. And remove the excess glitter with a fluffy brush. And at this stage, I really didn't care that I got glitter everywhere, so I'm just, yeah. If you want to save it, save it. Now we are up to the pink glitter, which is our strawberry sherbet. Again, same method as before, remove the little cutouts that you've done and then apply your pink glitter. Push it into the adhesive paper and then remove the excess glitter. Double check that you've got all the necessary parts filled in with glitter and dump. Shake, shake. And fluffy brush. Okay, repeat the same process again and we are up to the orange. If you're wanting to give this template a go yourself, we do have the template available on our website. I'll link it just below. Okay, now that the glitter is everywhere that I can see, I'm just going to, again, dump my glitter. And fluffy brush. I used to use a chip brush, but I found that it kind of got underneath the un unglittered parts, so I decided to try this fluffy brush, and it's perfect for this job. Nice and soft, doesn't remove any of the cut areas that I haven't glittered yet. Now we're just up to the yellow. Same process as before. These are little tiny dots and I made this stupid mistake of, I don't know why, putting it into my actual glitter container, which is a very smart idea. So you see that I have to strain my glitter because I have little bits of paper in there. Very smart. Here you go, you can see them. And I'm just going to dump that. Okay, so there's not really many parts of this cut template that I need to do the yellow, so this will be a very quick one. Cool. 
make sure everything is all done and glittered and then I will remove the excess glitter once again fluffy brush and this is what it looks like got the colors all applied to our template I'm just going to be removing the remainder of my cutout template and I am going to be applying ring bling and ultra fine this is a mirror silver white which shines beautifully under epoxy or even Hyperion which in this case is what we're using today Hyperion carefully remove it now you can really see the differences in color before you couldn't quite see it as well but you can see the different purple blue pink orange and yellow And there she looks. Isn't she stunning? Okay, anyway, up to the white. Now it is literally a case of dump your white glitter on and fill in all the spots that you haven't glittered yet. Now once you've got all your white glitter down, remove it by doing the dump method again. Once you've checked over that you've got all remaining spots covered in glitter, dump that glitter onto your spare piece of paper and save it for later. And this is what it looks like. Absolutely love it. Especially the iridescent part of the arrows. Okay, now I'm going to do a final once over with a fluffy brush just to make sure that I haven't got any loose glitters staying on my template. What you want to do is that you want to spray your template with Rust-Oleum clear coat or any clear coat basically that you've got. Do it two times, let it dry, and this is what it will look like. You should not have any glitter coming off your template onto your fingers afterwards. Okay, now we're up to the tricky part. <laughs> so this is why I mean that I do my burst templates a bit differently. Um, the reason why I do it on a backing is that it makes application onto my tumblers so much more easier. Over in America, you guys have um, cat, scratch, uh, cat scratch tape. Heck, try to say that fast. Cat scratch tape. 
Um, but here in New Zealand, we don't have that available. Um, so we use a pretty cheaper, a cheaper alternative, um, which isn't as thick. So whenever I cut my burst templates, it cuts all the way through and just makes application a nightmare. So that's why I apply it onto vinyl. It doesn't cut all the way through and means that I can actually apply it afterwards after I've glittered everything. So just going to trim my template to size. Almost there, a little bit more. Okay, perfect. I'm happy with that. Trimming the bottom. I don't mind if there's a little bit of an overhang up the top. It's a lot easier to trim at the top of the tumbler than at the bottom. Now this is where I apply my template onto my tumbler. So using the hinge method I'm just going to remove the backing just ever so slightly and apply glass cleaner onto the vinyl. The reason why I use glass cleaner is it makes it not adhere right away onto my tumbler going to just find this center line and draw a straight line using our tumbler ruler. Might not be able to see it, there you go. And that is going to give me a straight line, straight edge for when I apply my template. There's a glass cleaner, just a cheapie, nothing too flash. And I've actually probably applied a bit too much on this point, but we'll go with it. Find your straight line and apply your template. Like I said, the reason why I applied the glass cleaner onto my tumbler, and you'll see me remove it and move it around a bit, it doesn't stick down right away. Now apologies for the dark light, we've got a bit of a storm here at the moment and the lighting here at the, the lighting is just terrible so apologies, it'll get better I promise. Okay so just removed the rest of the backing, reposition when I need to. close the gap. Now it's not quite straight enough for me so I will sort that out in a moment. Just going to seal in my glitter using Helios glue. Um, I know I, I have already spray painted it with clear coat um, but this is just another added step to make sure that A the Hyperion adheres to my tumbler and also any stray bits of glitter that I might have had on my hand it's all sealed in.
first coat of Hyperion. Now this is going to be a FUD coat so this means that I am applying quite a lot of this Hyperion product onto my tumbler. Reason being is that I want to make it so that there's enough product on my tumbler to soak into the glitter and make the process a bit easier by making it a smoother surface faster. Let that rotate on your turner. Don't worry about the bottom. I will apply Hyperion onto it anyway, but don't worry about that yet. We will paint it down the track. Now this application is in real time. Later on with the other coats that I do, I will speed it up for you. But this is just to show how easy it is to apply Hyperion. I'm using a fan brush and putting it on my turner. It dries literally within four hours. You can do a recoat within that time frame too. Okay, I'll speed it up and you will see me apply quite a few coats. I do give it a light sand after the third coat. You will see that it isn't as glossy, um, my tumbler isn't as glossy as before. Okay, once that is all cured, I'm going to paint the bottom of my tumbler using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the colour white. And while the paint is still wet, I will apply my glitter. Now, funny story about this part of the video. An earthquake happened. I'm not kidding. I actually forgot to turn off my camera. I ran. <laughs> so, um, if you see my screen shaking, this was a 6.3 earthquake, I believe, that hit a few kilometres away. But yeah, watch this. Yeah, so that earthquake went for a long time. So anyway, shaky hands and everything, but um, yeah, I'm just going to apply the white paint onto the bottom of the tumbler and apply my Ring Bling Ultra Fine Glitter while my paint is still wet. Apologies, I'm out of frame here. I try. And before your paint dries, remove the tape just to make sure it doesn't lift up any of the other part that you've painted. Okay, third coat of Hyperion. Now after this coat has all cured, I will give it a light sand once again. The aim of doing this sand is that you try and level out most of your tumbler before you go to the next step so gradually it gets smoother and smoother and the gloss starts shining through. Don't forget your bottom. Apply quite a decent amount of Hyperion onto your bottom now that you've got your glitter on there. Okay we're going to speed through the coats now because it's basically the same. I do another coat. This is a thicker coat than normal. 
and I give it another sand afterwards as well. It is looking pretty smooth at the moment, so I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Onto the fifth coat of Hyperion. And I thought it kind of needed a little bit more shimmer and sparkle. So I've gone in with our special blend of Moonhopper. It's an in house glitter mix that we make here. I'm just going to sprinkle it all around the bottom of my tumbler and the top. Put a paper underneath, and there is a gorgeous moon hopper. And because I went to Harry Hart out with putting it on the bottom, it kind of sprinkled around the top of the cup, uh, middle of the cup as well. So I thought, okay, I'll salt bay some more glitter all over the tumbler. Works out fine though. Make sure the bits are smushed down as much as possible, especially if you're using a chunkier cup than you have before. Okay, I'm just going in with a fluffy brush and removing any of the excess glitter that I have sitting on my tumbler. There is quite a bit. And now I'm just going to go in with the sixth coat of Hyperion. After this coat, I will do a light sand and repeat the process. Now once that is all cured, I gave it a light sand and I'm just going to trim up the edges of the rim. Awesome thing about using Hyperion is it's just so easy to clean your top rim and anything that goes inside of your tumbler. See, I don't need to tape the inside of my tumbler. Whereas if I was to do this with epoxy, I'd have to tape the inside of my tumbler and make sure that no excess epoxy goes in it. Because otherwise it's an absolute nightmare to remove. Okay, so sharp knife, cutting in a kind of a soaring motion, I would say. 
don't drag your craft knife across your tumbler. You'll just kind of tear or pull away your Hyperion, especially before it's actually cured. Okay, nice and smooth. Checking that all the bits are smooth or if there's any more bits that I need to sand down. Okay, we're up to the seventh coat of Hyperion. This is just a standard amount of Hyperion that we're applying onto the tumbler. Let that spin and then we will continue on with our layers. Much of the rest of the video is me applying more coats of Hyperion. Um, after every maybe one or two coats I do a light sand. Like after this coat. This is the eighth coat and then I apply a light sand after it. Just to make it as smooth as possible because of course I did add the extra glitter on top. If I didn't do the extra glitter I wouldn't need to sand or do as many coats. So I'll fast forward through all these layers. I'm sure you don't want to sit here watching that. Ninth coat of Hyperion, again standard coat. You may be able to see that my tumbler is slightly matte. That should be happening after you have sanded your tumbler. So it should kind of have a matte effect. And then once you apply a next, your next coat of Hyperion, it will become glossy again. Tenth coat, again I gave it a sand and this is where you start to see how shiny the tumbler is going to be. Now the reason why I started with Hyperion is I became highly allergic to epoxy which it's so sucky. <laughs> I love using epoxy on my tumblers but after having the big reaction, I couldn't handle it anymore, so I had to find an alternative. And now we are New Zealand's only um, distributor for Hyperion, because I love this product so much. I wanted others who are also having a similar problem to be able to use it. So we are on the 11th coat. There is one more coat after this, and then our tumbler is done. So after this 12th coat has cured, I am just going to take it off my turner, remove the insert inside the tumbler and then slowly trim the top edge as well. So now that it is all cured, look how shiny it is. I love it. You can slightly see the seam, but no biggie. The pattern matches up perfectly. So I'm just going to cut again the inside edge of my tumbler. And then my tumbler is finished. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and get to try this tumbler out yourself. You can literally change the colours to any colour, it can be mermaid, it could be um, neon colours, neon glitters, anything that you want to do. There we go. Remove 
remove the insert and she is done. Look at it. So pretty.